So yeah, so Papabello, we can see that just in a nasty downtrend, and worst of all about the downtrend is there's real volume that traded. So, you know, we can't just ignore it. Granted, today was the highest volume, but we still had some high volume days back here, some a decent volume day here. So, you know, I think it's going to have a hard time breaking out of this downtrend. Now, needs to break 25 cents on some serious volume. Let's see if we get another really nice volume day tomorrow before we talk about maybe playing this as a, as a continuation type play. As for support, I'd like to see it stay above yesterday's high of around 19 cents. CHD. So back to back, over, first of all, very nice chart, okay? Really nice uptrend, has pushed to new highs even as the market has sold off big time. And, you know, I like that. We always like stocks that are holding up well in the face of broader market weakness. However, it did give up all of its gains from this kind of breakup. So it consolidated here for four days and then pushed above it. And now it's given up all those gains and gone back below this, this day's low, actually. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a further pullback down towards this $51 to $52 range. And the volume was lower than yes than the up day on Tuesday. But these two volume days, these two supply volume days combined are greater than this volume day. And if you combine the last, if you take the last five days, it actually traded lower. It traded lower three out of the last five days. However, if you look at the recent chart history, It also traded lower three out of the last five days from this stretch here and then continued higher. Traded lower three out of the last five days from this stretch here and then went on to trade higher. Again here and then it actually traded higher. You know, and we see that on numerous times. But there's a big difference between this most recent stretch and the other stretches we've just compared it to. Somebody want to point out what the difference is? Yeah, but that has to do with the markets. What does it have to do with... We want to compare CHD to CHD. While we do want to notice that it's holding up well while the market is, is doing poorly, in terms of volume patterns and price action, comparing its most recent activity to its activity from January, February, March, you know, we're going to compare it to, to itself. We're not going to compare it to the market. Think back to what we discussed with Lululemon yesterday and Home Depot the day before it and Starbucks. No, this isn't the high. Well, I mean, this volume is high on back-to-back -back down days, but you had a huge down day here and then another one here. What I notice is that these stretches of weakness came in the midst of a consolidation pattern. It came when the stock had established a base. These last two days, though, there's no real base. There's no base that's been established where it's kind of trading in between a range versus the, this occurrence here in January, this stretch here in February, and then this stretch here in March. If you look also, it's at all-time highs, so we might have to come down a little bit. Are we at all-time highs? Yeah, we're definitely at all-time highs. Just a really, really nice chart overall. Very strong uptrend. Church and White Incorporated. Sounds like an interesting company. Okay, so we've got this uptrend here. Got the uptrend off the 2009 low that it, it broke, but it's actually gotten above if you, if you see that right there. Okay, so that's really nice. 
Just a really strong chart. Let's look at the intraday and see what we got going on. So some, some solid supply downside on the 60 minute chart, both times closing out the day. So there's been some aggressive selling towards the end of the day the last two days. I noticed that. So I don't know if that bodes well for the immediate term, but as I pointed out with these longer term charts, this is a, a very, very bullish chart. And also what I notice is that it hasn't gone below its prior month's low. In other words, it's got, let's see, So since August 1st, it's put in higher lows month after month after month. So the first sign that this long-term trend might, might uh, need to cool off a little bit will be if it trades below this monthly low of 50.43 because it hasn't done that. And whenever something does something that it hasn't done before, we need to take notice and consider that maybe it's trying to tell us something about the trend. Another one that just looks like a piece of crap. Just nothing. I don't even want to. The reason I don't talk about some of these stocks when they look so bad to me like this is because I don't want you to be like, well, he said there's support at 20 cents, so I can play it because it's very close to support, and then you just lose your money. So that's why I don't even do analysis because I don't want anybody to trick themselves into playing a stock that is just so decimated. There's much better opportunities out there. Okay, now for my favorite, we have SPY. So SPY, of course, is the ETF that tracks the S&P 500. So 130.77 is 1307.7. You can see SPX goes at 1304.8. So, you know, give or take two and a half points and it does a pretty decent job. Now, a couple things. This uptrend off of the October low has been violated. And if you look at once it broke, you can see the retest here on the back side and it failed to get back above it. So that was a bearish sign. Okay. In the more intermediate term, we we're also pulling back on the highest volume of the year. However, from a longer term perspective, this volume is much, much lower than the volume that we traded here uh, in August, July. And the scope of the down move has been much less violent. So granted, we've pulled back about 10% off the 1420 high. And we've done that, you know, in relatively a short amount of time. I mean, in just since May 1st, we May 1st we closed, we hit a high of 141.66. We're down here at, you know, already at 130. However, what I want to point out is that in July and August, SPY was able to fall from 131 all the way down to like 111 in a matter of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days. So the magnitude of this down move, while it's certainly creating, causing some panic, it isn't even close to how bad things were in the summer. So I know a lot of people are really nervous that maybe we're going to come back and test these lows. In my opinion, if, that, if something like that was going to happen, we would have seen volume similar to these early days here in late July when we had 306 million shares trade on the 29th, 325 million shares trade on the 1st of August, 346 million shares versus here we've had 252 million, 207 million, 207 million, 163 million. So what does that tell us? How come I'm pointing that out? How come I'm using that as a reason for why this down move isn't going to be as nasty as the one we saw in August? 
what significance does that have? Right. Lower supply and even lower demand. And what does that tell us just about the market as a whole? I'm thinking more in terms of participation. Right. Just not a lot of money right now. There's just, no, there's just not much participation in the market. It looks like a lot of people got flushed out here in August and September and October, and they never came back. And since they never came back, those same people who caused the drastic down move in July and August, they're just not around to cause a, a, a similar down move. So this down move here is more about low supply and even lower demand than it is about high supply. What we've seen, though, recently, is we got a slight uptick in supply, and you can see that, you know, with the market breaking some key levels, there just hasn't been any any real demand and, and no reason to go in. Everybody wants, everybody's posturing. Now, looking at this chart, here's what I see. I see these highs here from September and these highs here from October. This is where I want to buy. I, if the market breaks below this range, that is when I'll become very nervous. Let's go to the S&P 500 to get a better view as far as where the, what the points actually are. So that range is 1230 to 1292. Wide range, definitely. However, this is why I said I expect the market to bottom between 1250 and 1300 if it broke below 1357. We wrote about that, uh, I don't know, maybe a month ago or so, saying there was no reason to go back below 1357. So... Personally, I believe we're much closer to the bottom for the market than we are, you know, to having things continue to go wrong. Again, though, if you look, after SPY made that down move, it took one month, two months, three months before it really, you know, stabilized. I would not be surprised to see the same thing happen. One month that would mean June 15th, uh, 17th, July 17th, August 17th. I would not be surprised to see the market bounce around in a range between now and late July, you know, mid-August. Because it just takes time to work out the kinks after you get a big directional move like this. Just like we had a big directional move to start the year from 1250 up to from 1250 okay this come on whatever from 1250 up to what was 1400 but really, if you look, the move actually stopped right here. And while it did advance, it never really pushed above it. So I would argue that we had a big directional move that went from January through March. And then since March, we actually consolidated just in a range between about 1350-ish and 14. 1410 ish with the exception of that brief move up to 1420 so then april and may we spent consolidating and then now we've made another directional move so like i just talked about you know june july i wouldn't be surprised to see us consolidate this directional move from a longer term perspective you've got a couple different perceptions you could take here you could say spy made this big move 
from, you know, the late 90s, and that was the tech bubble here bursting, and then it pulled back. You had to, you had 9-11 go on, and then, you know, the Afghan war and all that. And then it bottomed out and made another big run, and then it also gave up all of those gains. So if you want to take a much longer-term perspective on the market, it's quite interesting because the market's been just perfectly flat for the last decade or so. You also have a lower high compared to the high made in 2007, and you have a lower low in 2009 compared to the low made in 2002. So you have the market has given up its gains once and twice. However, it also recovered all of its losses once and almost twice again for the most part. So the key from a longer term perspective is those 2011 lows which was around 1100 in the S&P. I believe it was 1074 on October 4th, I believe was the exact day that the S&P 500 bottom. Let's just check that really quickly. Yes, 1074.77 on October 4th. You see, when you live and breathe the market, you can just call out major technical events. They're just embedded in your brain. All right, so from a longer term perspective, these lows are key, that 1074 low. If that breaks, if that low were to break, and that would be drastic. I mean, if that's going on, there's going to be a lot of bad shit going on in the, in the economy in general. If that low were to break, then I would not be surprised to see a retest of the 2009 lows. However, if we can find support above that 1250 to 1300 range and remain, you know, above this consolidation channel, we're going to have a, another higher low on the yearly, and we're going to undo the trend of giving up 100% of the gains after the run, like we saw after the 90s run and the housing bubble run. So that would be good. So I'd really like to see it hold in that 1200, uh, 1250 to 1300 range. But overall, as long as the market stays above its 2011 lows at 1074, then, you know, we're in business. Back to the short term, because I know that's what we're most concerned about. Highest volume on a down day today of the year, I believe. So... And we are coming near a lot of supports. So if we just take this line and move it that way, you can see we're coming down towards those prior highs. We've got some congestion that went on in this range right here. There is also lows right here. So there's just overall, there's a lot of activity, a lot of price activity in this range. So again, I, I believe you kind of got a position for a bounce here. The market's already pulled back 10%. Remember, it's not about being greedy in terms of you're going to trade SPY from 130.82 down to 130. It's about being greedy in the fact that you're going to try and do that in SPY after it's already gone from 141 down to the level it's at now. I think on the short side, majority of the money has already been made. That doesn't mean there's not more downside to that 125 to 130 range. I'm just saying you got to be much more, you got to be on your toes much more. The time to get short was when SPY broke this support level. You can see that's really when the floodgates opened. Let's look at the 15 minute chart. So, you know, closed on the lows. So let's see if we get up volume within the first 15 minutes tomorrow of greater than 12 to 15 million shares as the price is increasing, that could be a sign that we're due for a healthy bounce, possibly back up to this, to these prior lows around 134, which would coincide with 1340, which would make sense because 1340 was previous support on the S&P 500, so that might be an area to target a move to.
All right. That's that. So let's close out the week strong tomorrow, and it'll be fun to watch Facebook. Have a good night, guys.